operations window and uh, the options you have here in the operations window. So here we have a part loaded and we did that by saying file uh, import drawing. So uh, before we put a go ahead and put a toolpath on it uh, using the create new jet cutting operation or the matchstick button, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, drill tool and the variable tool. So the drill tool allows you to center mark. Let's say we wanted to just punch a hole, a pierce hole at the center of these holes. Uh, we can do that by using this drill tool. Okay, so and you can either have your holes on a separate layer, and we'll cover that a little bit later, uh, or you can um, do it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the layer. We only have one. If we had them on a separate layer, we would select the whole, you know, the layer that they were on. We're going to select the drill tool from our tool database. And then we're going to select the hole size. So these holes are, are right around one inch. So we're going to say minimum hole size zero. Maximum is going to be 1.25. And it should select every hole within that range in this drawing. And it did. So you see how it, uh, it selected those holes. Now, the problem with this is if I now put another toolpath on it, uh, it's going to try and cut those same holes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about edit contours uh, while we're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this operation. We're going to go up here and s highlight the C button, edit contours. Now, notice when I roll over, uh, well, sometimes they change color. Sometimes they don't. I want to roll over uh, this uh, entity right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say move to layer. And we're going to say new layer. We'll name it uh, holes. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to left click this one. And I'm going to say move to layer, not a new layer. I'm going to move it to the holes layer this time. Okay, now I can check that by just uh, checking that layer. If when I uncheck that holes layer, the holes disappear. That tells me that they're on that layer. And the outer contour is now on the zero layer. Okay, so now let's go back to the drill tool. We're going to select the drill tool. We're going to select the holes layer. This is all still good. Drill tool, our min max hole size. Okay, so what that's going to do, the plasma will come down to the center of the hole, touch off, pierce, go back up, come over to this hole, touch off, pierce, and then uh, it'll go on to the next operation. So let's create that next operation by clicking on the matchstick button. This is remembering from what we did last. So if we want to do an outside offset, we're going to use the zero layer. That's our outside offset. Uh, our 05 kerf is good. We'll use an overcut of, say, 0.125. All this is still good. Not checked, not checked, checked. We're going to use an arc lead-in of, say, 1 inch and an arc lead out of the same uh, dimension as our curve width, which is 0.05. So then we hit OK. So now we have a tool path. Now, I want to move that lead in. I don't like it right there. So to move the lead in, I'm, I'm still in edit contours mode, so I have to go to edit start point mode here. OK, now you see how it's the mouse still isn't following. Well, that's because I don't have the outside offset operation selected. I have the uh, drill holes operation. So I'm going to select the outside offset operation. And now the lead's following my mouse. And I want to put it right there. So the way this job is going gonna, is gonna to work, the plasma is going to come over here first. <coughs> it's going to pierce the center of this hole. 
pierce the center of this hole, then come over, uh, drop down, pierce, start cutting, and go ahead and cut the other contour. And then you could drill, or, or uh, if you have an iron worker, you can use that pierce hole as a center mark for your iron worker. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete these two operations. Okay, and let's talk a little about the variables. You have three variables available to you. You have cut speed, you have light gauge, and you have THC on. So THC on has a value of 0 or 1. Uh, if you omit it completely and just don't even select the variable at all here, uh, it will default to being on. Okay, if you want to turn the torch height control off for some reason, uh, you're going to set that to 0. Okay, so set variable THC on equals 0. That means the THC is will not be on for everything below that. Okay, so let's say that I want to keep the THC off for the holes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the holes this time. But since it's on a separate layer, I have to do an inside offset on the holes layer. And everything here still looks good other than my lead. A one inch arc lead isn't going to work in a one inch hole. So I need to do a perpendicular lead and we'll make it oh, 0.4. There we go. So we have an inside contour with a 0.4 inch perpendicular lead and a small lead out. Okay, so now we want to cut the outer contour, but for the outer contour, we want the torch height control on. Okay, so we're going to hit the V again. We're going to set THC on to 1. And then we're going to go ahead and do the outside offset on the outer contour. And I'm just going to use the same. Now I'm going to use an arc lead in of 1 inch. And again, to move that lead, we have to select that operation over here. And we have to be in edit start point mode at the time. <coughs> there we go. So we have the torch height control off. And everything happens here on the order you see it. So torch height control is off. We cut the holes. Torch height control is back on and we cut the outer contour. Okay, so let's delete all of this. Okay, so let's talk about light gauge. Light gauge is going to be used for anything, oh, say, uh, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, or, or lighter, somewhere in there. What it does is it omits the G04 pause dwell command in the G code, and it, it helps the torch to go from lighting to moving a little bit faster and prevents blowouts on, on uh, light gauge metal. So light gauge is defaults to being off. If you want to turn it on, we're going to set light gauge to 1, just like this. And then we would go ahead and create our, create our tool paths. selected the wrong layer here. I want the holes layer first. Okay, and then we want the outside offset on the outside layer. We'll do an arc lead of, say, one inch. Looks good. Now we're going to highlight that so we can move that lead. Okay, so now we're, we're, we have light gauge turned on, uh, and we have an inside offset and an outside offset. Now we can still set the, uh, the torch height control. So you don't really need the torch height control in these small holes. Uh, so you can go ahead and turn it off. So we're going to set THC equals 0. But then we want to turn it back on, so we're going to say THC equals 1. OK, 
Okay, now remember everything happens in the order it appears. So we're going to THC zero uh, on equals zero. We want to turn the torch height control off just before the inside offset on the holes. So we're going to drag it up to right there. We want to turn it, turn the torch height control back on just before the outer or the outside offset on the rest of the part, which would be right there. Okay, so we talked a little bit about feed rate before um, in the tools videos. Uh, feed rate is set on the machine in in Mach 3 on true cut machines. Uh, we don't set feed rate here in we don't have a feed rate attached to the tool. Uh, some shops prefer that the feed rate be hard coded into the program. They don't want the operator to be able to change that feed rate. So if you prefer to hard code your feed rates, or uh, let's say that you want to uh, put a much slower feed rate on these holes. Let's say that to get a good quality hole, you're going to want to uh, turn your feed rate way down on the hole. So let's say that our normal feed rate for this part is 100 inches a minute. Uh, to get a good quality hole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock out the torch height control. So torch height control off. Okay, I'm going to set the feed rate to 25. Okay, now when you set cut speed, you have to, for some reason, go back in and redo it. So 25. Okay, so we're going to move that to the top. So now we're, we're, we're in light gauge mode for the entire job. Uh, we have the torch height control off. We have the cut speed to 25, and we cut the inside contour. Now, if we don't change this cut speed, it's going to uh, it it'll cut the outer contour at 25 also, and we don't want that. So what we can do is we can either reset the cut speed to our regular feed rate and move that right here, or uh, we can simply set it back to zero. If we set it back to zero, it will revert to whatever is entered on the machine for a feed rate. Uh, if we don't want that, if we don't want the operator to have control over the feed rate, then we can uh, simply set it to our desired feed rate right here. Uh, and that, That's every variable used right there. So remember light gauge on very, very light gauge metal, uh, torch height control, uh, and all, all this happens in the order you see it. So remember if you set the torch height control off here, but you want it turned on uh, before the next operation, you actually have to turn it back on by setting that variable to one. And the same thing with cut speed. So the best thing to do is if you're using variables and a number of them like we did here, Look at your actual cut operation. So in this case, it's this inside offset on the holes. And then look above that. Okay, we're turning light gauge on. THC is off. Cut speed is 25. Okay, so now let's look at the next operation, or the next uh, contour operation, which is going to be an outside offset. And let's look above that one. So we have THC is on and the cut speed is set back to 100. And again, setting cut speed to zero would revert it back to whatever is entered on the machine. Okay, so if you don't want to mess with any of these variables, don't worry about any of them. Just delete. We'll delete them all. And in most cases, uh, this is going to produce a part that's just fine. Uh, the variables simply give you a way of controlling the toolpath a little bit further. Uh, it helps to deal with very light gauge metal or a thick plate when you want a better quality hole. Uh, you know, with thicker plate, you can lock out the torch height control and turn your speed way down on holes. Uh, you can control your. It, it, it just it, it gives you better control over your toolpath. Uh, for the not so standard metals. Uh, that pretty much covers the operations.
uh, and we will see you in the next video.